Welcome to the Sociocracy for All webinar, Deciding Together the Sociocratic Approach. The aim of this event is to help groups make decisions that are aligned with their values of transparency, equal voice, and effectiveness. Organized by members of the Sociocracy Leadership Training. One group of the Sociocracy Leadership Training spent 12 weeks getting to know each other, learning sociocracy, and producing this event. Sociocracy means governance by the socius, those who work together. Sociocracy, also known as dynamic governance, has three key elements. A decision-making process that includes every voice, an organizational structure that can carry that inclusion into organizations of any size and complexity, and a focus on feedback that allows the organization to grow and adapt in changing environments. We are all part of groups or organizations that need to make decisions together. We want to make sure no one in the group is ignored. We want to make sure we can hear when people have issues that keep them from contributing to the group in the best way they can. We want to be effective in what we do, so we don't waste time and energy, but flow together, work through differences, and don't get stuck as a group. Sociocracy is more than decision making. It also involves how we organize and link our committees that we call circles, and it involves how we learn as an organization. Today, the focus will be on decision making. The way of decision making in sociocracy is called consent. We will do a brief introduction of consent decision making and demonstrate it with two skips. Afterwards, we will put everyone in breakout rooms to reflect on what you heard, and then we will come back as a whole to questions and answers. After closing the webinar formally, we will stick around for anyone who wants to continue the discussion informally. To start with, we will put you in breakout rooms for five. One of the main tools uh, for facilitating uh, in sociocracy, uh, what we call rounds. And it makes uh, a lot of sense when you're in a room together and you're sitting around a table. Uh, a round is just going around and hearing from everybody once. Um, we facilitate that online here by having the facilitator call on people in order. Um, so that we can hear from everyone, because that's the important part. That's what we're trying to do here with rounds is hear from everybody and give everyone uh, a chance to express um, what's up for them regarding the decision that's um, under consideration. We like it a lot. We found that it, it makes this really nice uh, flow to a meeting that, that sometimes uh, you lose if, if people are just talking as things pop into their minds. So it feels a little more uh, smooth. So um, next slide, please. <clears throat> and then, um, so what we're doing here today is we're going to give you a sample of a decision just so you can see what that looks like when you make it using this process. And one of the things that, that's unique about what we're doing here is that it's consent-based decisions, which means that everybody um, consents to the decision, meaning they don't have objections to it. They might have preferences, um, but the decision making that we do uh, focuses only on making sure that we're not harming the aim of uh, the group and, and their purpose in uh, meeting together. Um, so we'll demonstrate what that looks like. Um, <clears throat> And so we're gonna do two skits here today. One where there's no objections, just so you can see the, how uh, that happens when it's just very simple and everybody's already on board with the uh, proposal. And then we'll do another one where some people have some objections and how we work through those using this process. So we'll do those two skits and then uh, we'll, we'll go into breakout rooms again to have a chance to reflect on, on what you saw and, and then later uh, for some group, big group uh, Q&A. So in this first skit, um, 
when we're making a decision, there's always a proposal. Um, and we strengthen them by including a time frame for review. So no decision is permanent and that helps people uh, move comfortably. Even if they're not totally sure about a decision, they might be sure about it if they're like, well, it's only for a couple months and then we're gonna review it. So that, that helps give comfort around those things. So our facilitator will introduce the proposal. And then there's three rounds that we do uh, in this decision-making process. Uh, so first is clarifying questions to make sure everybody in the group understands it. How can we decide if we don't understand just what's written about the proposal? So there's that. And then the quick reaction round gives everybody a chance to um, say what they're thinking about it because they're going to have thoughts and feelings about it anyway. So it's just we find it helpful to get that all out into the open quickly. Um, and sometimes maybe some modifications will come up because of that. Um, and then uh, as we work through that, then there's a consent round where we just go around and check if everybody uh, feels that what we've put together is good enough for now to proceed with and safe enough to try. Okay, so now we're going to do the skit demonstrating the decision making process. Now, sociocracy does offer a way to generate proposals. Uh, this skit that we will do now uh, would only show what happens once we have a proposal. During the skit, we're only going to hear from the actors in the skit. Here's the context. We live in a cooperative housing community, specifically co-housing, where there are a number of houses clustered together and there are also fields and gardens. We're about to witness part of a meeting of the circle, that's the word for committee in sociocracy, that is responsible for decisions about pet policy. Based on input from previous meetings, one of the circle members has prepared a policy proposal about dogs. Let's listen. Uh, so we have a proposal from Tim about the dog issue that he presented last month. I'm going to read the proposal. It says, policy term end, November 2019. That's three years. Dogs have to be on the leash in the community except in Playfield. Owner slash companion must clean up all droppings except in the areas not mowed around the garden and play field. Can be in fenced area or on a dog run in lieu of a leash if under supervision. We'll do a round of clarifying questions on that. Tim, can you start? Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't have any questions. Thank I have you. a question. So what's meant by a fenced in area? Is that like a backyard? Uh, Tim, can you answer that? Uh, yeah, I hope that's the new fenced-in areas that you see in some backyards like Carl's. Uh, hope, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Okay, now let's continue with our round. I have no clarifying questions myself. Well, what about you, John? Um, I understand the proposal. Okay. Kimbria? I have no questions. Okay. So let's do a quick reaction round. Kimbria, do you want to start? I like it. I like it too. I really like the wording of the last sentence. What about you, Tim? Yeah, I like it. I think it's going to be helpful to have this policy. Okay. Hope and then John? Yeah, it looks good to me. So thank you, Tim, for writing this up. It is good. All right. Sounds like we're ready for a consent round. Let me start with Hope. Do you consent to this proposal? I do. Uh, John and then Kimbria? I consent. So do I. Um, myself and then Tim. I personally consent. And I have no objection. Okay, so it is. Ooh, yay. Right. Cool. So as you heard, this was a fairly simple process because there weren't any objections to this particular proposal in the skit you just heard. Um, in the next skit, it's going to be the same proposal, but we're going to hear some objections. And one will turn out to be a personal preference, and the group will listen and try to evaluate whether the concern affects their work. And then there will be a real objection, which they will address and resolve. 
So now we will move on to skit number two. Proposal consent rounds with objections. Okay, let us test for consent on the Tim's proposal that I just read. So can we hear all the objections? Let me start with you, John. Do you consent to this proposal? No, I'm not so sure about the dogs in the play field because of my pumpkin patch, which is right next to it. So I'm concerned. Okay, let's hear the others and then we come back to you. Tim, what about you? I have no objections. Hope? I have an objection. It's around barking. Okay. We want to hear more about that in a minute. First, Kimbria? No objection. Okay. And I have no objections. Let's start with John's objection then. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Can you tell us more, please? Well, I've been thinking about Kaiko's dog, and I'm not very comfortable with him loose in the play field right by the garden. So what I hear you say is that you're not comfortable, especially with big dogs like Kaiko's. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Okay, let's all do a reaction round on the objection. Tim, would you start, please? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I get that, John. Um, although I have to say that the dogs seem to stay in the dog run. Um, I don't see how the people in the gardens would be affected. Thank you, Tim. Cambria, then myself. So I can see how impressive the big dogs are when they run wild, but I also see the dogs need some space to run around. What I was wondering was whether it's the size of the dog that's relevant. Um, I'm thinking maybe we could amend the proposal and restrict the dogs off, off leash in the play field to dogs under 25 pounds. Owners of big dogs would just have to walk further away from the property, and everyone on the property would feel comfortable. Okay. Um, I want to come back to what Tim said. The dogs don't go into the pumpkin patch ever because there is a fence. So I understand that some people are uncomfortable, but that is a personal preference because there is really not any harm. I wanted to ask John if he would be okay if we made sure that the pumpkin patch remains inaccessible to dogs and to keep in mind that dog owners really value their dogs running around. Hope, it's your turn. Well, at first I was totally with John, but after hearing Tim, I have to agree. I don't really like big dogs running around, but really I have to admit that if there's a fence, it doesn't really affect people. Okay, that was one round. Let me check in with John. Hmm. I want to thank everybody for taking my concerns seriously. Uh, I can agree that my discomfort is just some kind of gut feeling that I have. The dogs in the playing field do not really affect me. And the fence around the pumpkin patch is actually in good shape. So I guess I'll be okay with the proposal. Thank you, everyone. Now let's take a deep breath. Okay. Hope, did you mention an objection earlier about barking? Yes. I'm concerned that if now we allow dogs to be off leash in fenced in backyards, then people will leave their dogs outside all the time and the dogs will bark a lot more than they do now. If more people fence in parts of their yards, this barking is only going to increase. And I'm really sensitive to noise, and this is going to be really annoying to me. Okay, let's do a quick reaction round on this objection. John? Hmm, interesting. I don't think I've noticed dogs barking much, so I, don't, I think I don't really know, have an opinion about this. Okay. Kimberly, what about you? I agree. I wonder what one could do about the barking now. And we don't know for sure that this is going to happen. So I'd like to know the facts first. Okay. Tim and then myself. Uh, I'll pass for now. Okay. So personally, having a dog, I think they would bark more. But I too don't see a way of really predicting what will happen. Hope, what about you? Well, 
I guess in order to find out what will really happen, we'll have to try it. We could name a point person who would then receive concerns so we have a way of knowing if increased barking is actually a problem. Also, I wonder if we could make the term shorter, like revisited in one year instead of three years. Three years seems like a really long time. Okay, Tim? Uh, yeah, this is great. I'm really thankful for the feedback here because I didn't think of, of this issue when I uh, added the fenced in areas to the proposal. Um, so Hope, I like your idea of having a point person to find out if it's a problem. Uh, and I think the one year, changing it to a one year term, a shorter term will be good. Okay, now let's do a second round. John, do you want to say something now? Sure, um, what Cumbria says stays with me. Maybe there's something else we could do against barking or to find out more about that. And of course, one year is, sounds good to me. Okay. I'd be willing to lead a helping circle to do some research. With a point person, the amended proposal should be safe enough to try for one year. And with the new information, we can improve the proposal if necessary. Yeah, I really like the ideas of point person and helping circle. Uh, Tim, what about you? Yeah, me too. Hope? I think it's a good idea. Okay, that was our second round. What I sense here is that we have three amendments to the proposal. The first amendment is that we will have a point person who will receive concerns and explore their nature. Second, we will change the term to one year. Tim, would you be willing to be point person? Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. So, the third amendment is that we make a helping circle to do some more research of what we can do to avoid barking. Kimbria, you said you would be willing to form a helping circle? Maybe Tim would like to be a part of that. And maybe Kaiko, since he is the dog lover in our community. Sure, I, I'll do that. Um, and I'll invite everyone and schedule a meeting in two to three weeks. Great. So I am amending the proposal. Now this is what we have. It reads, policy term end November 2017, one year. Dogs have to be on the leash in the community except in playfield. Owner slash companion must clean up all droppings except in the areas not mowed around the garden and play field. Can be in fenced area or on a dog run in lieu of leash if under supervision. There will be a point person to collect concerns around noise and the point person's report will contribute to the evaluation of this policy. As of November 2016, the point person is Tim. The circle is creating a helping circle to do more research on avoiding barking. Kimbria convening the helping circle. So, are there any clarifying questions? Okay, seeing none, let's do a consent round to see if we missed anything. Tim, why don't you start? Uh, I have no objections to that proposal. Hope and then John? No objections, thanks a lot. I consent. Kimbria than myself. I consent. Thanks a lot, Eric. And I have no objections either. So we made a decision. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, so we've got this open time um, for questions, and uh, we're going to go around the, the different uh, group leaders if we can to just see what came up. So John McNamara raised one. Uh, what about permanent by cutting down a tree? Um, yes, those are the more challenging ones because you can't, um, you know, when you, you know, a tree, at least perhaps you could grow another tree, but when we're building uh, concrete houses, uh, that makes change much more difficult. So it requires uh, just a lot more attention um, to that decision. There isn't really another option uh, other than more attention. That's interesting that we had the same question in our group. And my, my point was that coming up with the proposal has to include the uh, dimensions, the picture forming process, and all those things on the sheet that you'll see in a minute. So that you're really, uh, you're really creating a proposal that includes everybody's considerations. 
and you sort of agree in a sociocratic organization that you're going to leave the objection that you have to, you know, very rare, very rare. You should be really blocking only a few times in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the, the founder of sociocracy, Gerard Endenberg, talked about the challenge of, of housing uh, in terms of decision making. That if you think back to, you know, if you think in terms of indigenous um, decision making about where we live, well, you, you can make changes. You know, if you're on this side of the river and the, the hunting is, has dried up, you can decide to go, you know, pick up some of your, your lightweight housing and move it, go, go across the river, go somewhere else. Uh, but with modern civilization, with high rise buildings and all the rest, it's much more harder to shift, which means things like climate change, droughts, all those things really affect these long-term decisions in a very serious way. Um, I'm, I'm complete. Uh, John, Mac, did you have any others from your group? Or um, so let me go to Hope and then Eric and see if you've got questions coming up from your group, Hope. Uh, muted Hope, Hope is muted. Yeah, the last question that we didn't have a chance to spend too much time on was uh, the classic, what's the difference between consensus and consent? Uh-huh, okay. That's always a challenging one. Um, so there's different ways of answering that. One is in, in consensus, the, the typical frame might be, do we all agree? In consent, the question is, does anybody have an objection? And it changes the bar to, to say, does anybody have an objection? Because what we're looking for in the objection is, is there anything that's going to get in the way of our moving towards accomplishing our aim? We're not looking for perfection. And there's a clear difference between a preference and an objection. I might prefer that we do this, but I don't have an objection to doing that. So that's the clear distinction, preference versus objection. Uh, and it's not always clear in the consensus process that people typically use um, that distinction. Um, there's other distinctions in that we use rounds a lot in, in, uh, in the consent process, whereas depending upon how you practice in the consensus process, it tends to be more calling on this person, that person, and that person. And then what you wind up having is often a debate. People saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you don't necessarily hear from the people who haven't spoken much, and perhaps you hear a lot from people who like to speak over and over again. You know, and sometimes a good facilitator will say, let's hear from those who haven't spoken, um, but it's a different nature than when you're really doing a round that really supports the equivalence of every voice. Um, so that's a couple of the differences. So I'd like to add that a lot of times you can solve the problem by shortening the time frame and strengthening the criteria for evaluation. And I've found that to be the most helpful thing out of uh, sociocracy that's really different from consensus. Mm -hmm. Let's shorten the time frame. Let's just do this for a short amount of time and let's strengthen the method of of evaluation because it's usually the usual objection in a consensus process is the unintended consequence. I think this will happen as a result of doing this. Well, let's actually find out. That's why they appointed a helping circle. Yeah. So rather than going for perfection with consensus, go for good enough to try so we can get more feedback with consent. Uh, Hope, any more? Uh, one person asked about how large a group can you effectively do consent decision making in? Yeah, the question to that really varies according to how frequently the group meets and how much time it spends together. Uh, if you have a group that's working nine to five, five days a week, uh, you can have a larger group. If you're meeting once a month like we are right now on online, then it might be a lot harder to to track everybody. My, my basic framework is how many people can I track of what's going on because you know, I can see some expression on their faces, et cetera. And to me, that tends to be, you know, the ideal size for me is like between five and 12. Once you get past 10 or 11, I, I really don't know what's going on with some of the people in the group. 
but there is no hard and fast answer to that. Uh, if you're working on a factory and you've got 40 people who all do the same work, uh, that can be one circle because they're not going to meet very often and they don't have that much policy to make. Circles are about making policy. Uh, so a board of directors has a lot of policy to make, whereas uh, a shop floor, uh, they'll, they won't have a lot of policy to make, so they'll have less need for meetings. Um, just because I know it's a misconception that comes up from time to time, this was answering the question about consent decision making. Sociocracy as a whole can be made in a large, in a like in very much larger group than seven or whatever said, five to twelve people, because what we do then is we we scale it up through interlinking circles. So. This was about mm -hmm. decision making, consent decision making, but I know that people have the misconception here and there about sociocracy that you can only do it in short, in small groups, which is not true because there is a system of scaling it up. So as a yeah. side note, yeah. Yes, the largest sociocratic organization is in India. It's a children's parliament and they've got thousands of circles uh, of 30, 30 children each and they have thousands of circles. And they are then linked between the village, the, the neighborhood, the village, uh, the district, the inter-village, inter-district level, and the state level, and then the national level. Um, so this this does scale. Um, okay, let's uh, go to Eric and then Tim. Eric, any questions coming from your group? Yeah, the main thing we talked about was also a classic, and it's the difference between personal preference and just the hard objection. The, I'm sorry, the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difference between the two, and I try to give a brief explanation of the concentric circles that you've shown us before. Yeah, right. Um, the example that I often give is, is, is partly because I live in a cooperative housing community where we have uh, joint meals from time to time. There are some of us in this community who are vegan and some who are vegetarian and some who really want a piece of meat of some kind on their table or else doesn't feel like it's food. Uh, so while some of us may be prefer to be vegetarian, if we want to eat meals with a large, you know, with the whole community, uh, then, then I will accept that there will be meat served because the greater aim that I have is community. So my personal preference might be to eat vegetarian, but I have no objection to meat and vegetarian entrees being part of our community meals because that serves the greater aim that I have of, of being in community with others. So, Eric, did you have another? Or I'll just keep going. No, I'll just keep going. We just yeah. talked a lot about the same thing. All right, Tim and then John Root. Uh, we also had a, a question come up, up about uh, if a group makes a decision that affects you and, and you weren't involved, you, you're not part of that group. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the, the structure of larger organizations and how uh, your group can elect a representative or a delegate to that other decision-making group so that you have a voice on it. Yeah, so feedback is one of the central elements of sociocracy. Any circle that has in its domain, you know, for example, the, skit, the skits that we used. So here was a circle <clears throat> in whose domain it is to make a pet policy. <clears throat> but there's another 50 people in the community who will be affected by the pet policy. <clears throat> so it becomes important for that circle to do some surveying of the community people to see what they're thinking about, um, <clears throat> to talk to particular dog owners or particular um, people who have concerns about dogs, to gather input from those folks, to <clears throat> gather all the sort of the elements, you know, that need to be thought about for a successful dog policy. <clears throat> and then to develop a draft and send it out to everybody and say, our circle is looking at making uh, this decision. Please give us your feedback. <clears throat> and again, there may be multiple ways of getting that feedback. Uh, just emails, surveys, 
having uh, group meetings, uh, open salon to gather feedback, um, et, et cetera. Um, but the key point is you're gathering feedback, so you're really taking into account uh, what people are saying. And at the end of the day, your circle is going to make that decision. It doesn't go back to everybody. Your circle makes the decision. And if there's concerns about the decision that you've made, you'll hear about it. And then you get a chance to, you know, to make some different decision. Or like what we did in the skit, we'll try this for this period of time and, and check in and see how it's affected everybody. Okay, we are um, close on time. Uh, John, Root, anything? So if you don't uh, have... Just, Bernie, just, we'll on, but. just very, very quickly, uh, as you can imagine, after my description of the difference between so consensus and consent, uh, the comment was, that sounds very utopian. Uh, how utopian is sociocracy? <laughs> Well, it depends upon what you, what the flavor of that word. Is it utopian? I sure hope so. Um, exactly. But, uh, it, do you mean utopian means like, oh, that'll never happen? Well, it is happening where lots of organizations do operate sociocratically, both communities and, um, and you know, um, uh, business organizations, electrical engineering organizations, uh, the children's parliaments, radio station, you know, there's a whole variety of organizations that are already operating sociocratically. And they're all happy. And if we think how viable it is to run organizations in other ways, that also raises questions for me. <laughs> so how viable is, uh, is, an hier is a top-down hierarchical organization in these days um, with, the, with the world planet situation as it is? Uh, Kimbria, anything from your group? Yeah, we, we ended up talking about power dynamics. Um, pretty much everyone had the same comment. What happens when someone is emotionally attached to their objection? Uh, how, what if people don't want to compromise? And we talked about the benefits of um, the system, the dynamics of uh, dynamic governance where it, it, it depersonalizes things so that um, it's not about blame when things not going, aren't going right, but it's about finding a solution that everyone can agree on. And uh, so feel free to speak to that if you'd like. Yeah, well, that's um, there's a multiple levels answers to those. Uh, yes, yeah, so ideally, as Kirby was just saying, the, the consent process is you're looking for how can we make this work? You know, what... What can we try that will give us enough information to see if we're heading in the right direction? So with someone who has an objection, is there some minimal thing that we can try and get feedback and move on? Um, there are other kinds of dynamics, which is, um, you know, the is the importance of feedback of how we operate in a group. So that's part of every meeting, ending the meeting with feedback. Um, to how well was this, you know, how well did this group go today, you know, in decision and in process. That means sometimes we have to say, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I noticed that, you know, whatever you spoke, uh, you spoke for a long time, longer than I was, you know, sort of comfortable listening to. Uh, we give feedback to people uh, because both the individual needs to have their space, but the group needs to have their space to be able to work effectively. Uh, that means also membership in circles is critical. Membership in circles is both and, the individual and the group. Uh, membership, so it's, it's important for a group who's making decisions together over a long period of time to be able to have a choice about who its members are. <clears throat> so one person can't simply join a group and then block everything that it does. You'll need some feedback to explore what's going on with that kind of dynamic. And in the worst case scenario, you may need to ask that person to leave the group, either on the basis of they don't really seem to share the same aim as the group, or on the basis that the group is not being able to work effectively together towards the aim. Yeah, and the other piece I would add for that is um, the alternative. You don't just uh, use, you don't have a paramount objection without some alternative to it so that there's there's a the no but then there's also the this is how we can move forward piece. yeah you don't I would say you don't always have to have an alternative 
uh, what you have to have with a paramount objection is reasons. You know, here's why. And then once you put out your reasons, then the whole group can take ownership of those reasons and explore, okay, how can we deal with, you know, with, with those? Is there a proposal? Is there another amendment that we could make that would help overcome, you know, the, the real concerns that somebody was raising? So you've met Jerry Koch Gonzalez. I'm Jennifer. And this is a nonprofit. The aim of Sociocracy for All is to bring sociocracy to people who we are sure would benefit from it. So that's why we put on webinars and we have a lot of video content on our website and in his YouTube channel. There's also one project that we do and that is called Sociocracy Leadership Training that we call SALT and the event circle that presented the skit. Those were all participants of that Sociocracy Leadership Training. SOFA is a nonprofit we would love to ask you for donations too if you got some value out of what you just heard and also from the videos go to our website sociocracyforall.org think whether you could maybe donate five dollars so we can keep up doing stuff for free a formal close yes formal so close. we will stay around but we're going to unmute everybody and we can all wave and say goodbye. Or start your video if you want to. You can start and your video for that. Yeah, yes, can, it just. Yeah, open up your videos. Beautiful. Thank you. Open up your mutes. We can do a lot of hand wavings. And, um, Bye, everybody. So, Bye, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.